Chippy again from UMCPortal.com with the NUC, the NUC, the next unit of computing, doing some more stuff with it right now. On this video, I'm going to try and um, edit this video down as tightly as possible to show you Xbox Media Center on it, um, how I install it, uh, the stages you need to go through to get that running. So just to recap, we've got the Intel NUC. This is the N2820 version, the Beitro M version, a brand new version. It's about $120, $130 worth. Um, it's got the visa mount that you put on the back of the screen. Uh, it's got the infrared receiver there as well. We've got um, XBMC Buntu. Um, if you go to the XBMC website, you'll see XBMC Buntu as one of the options. It is an operating system with XBMC built into it, a Linux operating system, and you can install that directly on the, the NUC. Just as a reminder, I've got an SSD in here, 240 gigs. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, is, is cut down Windows 8.1, move a little bit of space onto one of the partitions so we can fit uh, XBMC Buntu onto that. Let's zoom in and I'll take you through the stages. XBMC on the Intel NUC N2820 version. So as I mentioned, the first thing I want to do is actually uh, get some space on this uh, Windows install. So we've got uh, 230, 223 gigs uh, on partition on that one. I want to shrink the volume down. It's going to tell me how much I can shrink it down. I think there's about 150 on there, so I'm expecting to get near 100 gigs that I could free up. Uh, I may not use 100 gigs, but uh, let's see what it comes up with. It should only take a few seconds. There we go. It's allowing me to free up 112 gigs. I think I'm going to free up just a very simple 20 gigs of space on this um, 20,000 megabytes and we'll shrink that down and, uh, and then hopefully we can uh, use that partition for uh, XBMC Ubuntu. So there's 20 gigs of space freed up. All we need to do is shut down Windows now and boot off the uh, DVD ROM. So we'll just plug the um, DVD ROM in there. Turn the NUC on and we'll hit F10 when the uh, menu system comes up so that we can go to the boot menu and uh, boot from the DVD ROM. So it might be a good idea of course to try XBMC Ubuntu without installing the first option there um, just to see that it works on your system. If it's not going to boot then it's probably not worth actually installing it so we'll, we'll give that a shot now. So it seems to be booting through. I'm actually pretty excited to see XBMC. I haven't seen it for about um, eight or nine years when I actually last saw it running on an original Xbox and where the name comes from. But uh, of course these days it's a self standalone media center and very capable and probably one of the most popular free media centers there are out, out there. Let's just wait for that to boot through now. So having a look through, it looks like um, things are working, network is, is working, video, I don't see any major problems there. The actual UI it seems to be working, the build seems to be working, the video is working, the ethernet's working. So that's good enough for me to go ahead and to um, install it to disk. So we're booting off the DVD now and we have chosen the install um, XBMC Ubuntu option now. We're just going into that and I'll show you how the setup goes through. So fairly straightforward. We want uh, English option here. Just going to the next setting. Right, ensure that this uh, PC has at least four gigs available and is connected to the in internet. Download updates while installing, we'll do that. And install um, third party software, yes, because we want MP3 support that doesn't usually come with uh, a Linux distribution. So let's uh, go to the next stage. Looks like there's another three or four stages to go to. Hopefully it's gonna ask me about the disk partitioning next, and I can choose that 20 gig space that I uh, prepared earlier. So yeah, we're talking about partitioning now. We don't want to erase the disk. I'm going to go to something else where I hope it will just allow me to choose that partition and to carry on. So it's going to uh, scan the disk now, show me the partitions that are available 
and there's that free space 20 gigs is it going to allow me to select that do I need to format it hmm um, okay yeah I'm just selecting free space it's not allowing me to format it because it's not actually formatted anyway let's just go for install now I, I don't have anything uh, very important on that Windows 8 installation it was a clean installation if, if everything goes wrong I'll reinstall it again but anyway I'll install that no root file system is defined okay please correct the partitioning menu okay now I have to create probably ha interesting now I have to create within that 20 gigs I'm gonna have to create the the uh, swap the root file system as well it's gonna ask me for root at least and swap alright let me take a closer look at this and I'll get back okay within that 20 gigs I've allocated 5 gigs to the root partition still got 15 gigs of free space but I'm just gonna see if I can install with a very simple single partition there uh-huh okay so we now have to s select a bootloader partition hmm. let me take a closer look at that all right okay as directed I've created a just a very small two megabyte BIOS grub area and uh, we'll go for the install now oh my goodness swap space we need to uh, create some swap space let's go back and create swap space okay I've created swap space um, twice the size of the RAM that I have inside so we've got um, a swap down here of um, where did it put it there it is four gigs and then with that free space I'm just going to create a home whoops a home directory there so that we can use that uh, use that later right so once that's created we'll go for our install now and see what happens just waiting for that partition information to get through to the system and install now well it's doing something so a little bit more complex than I thought. I was hoping it would take that 20 gig space and then offer a uh, partitioning um, within that 20 gig space, but you have to create the partitioning yourself. So now we're going through time zone, uh, keyboard. Um, I guess we need a username. So username, the computer's name is gonna be XBMC. Brat username Steve password. We'll put a password in there. And um, let's uh, take those and see what happens. So, as you can see, it's installing now. Seems we've got the partitioning acceptable maybe not perfect let's see how long it takes to install xbmc we'll be back when it's uh, at the final installation as that installs it's probably worth mentioning that this is a free bit of software and um, if you can support it in any way go to the xbmc website uh, where you can make a donation ah uh, yes i made a little donation back to XPMC still installing that's about 10 minutes so far and there we go it's installed we need to reboot now so we've shut down XPMC we've removed the uh, DVD drive and that is just about to reboot now I believe press enter it helps now the interesting thing is going to be what is going to be what boot boot manager are we going get, to gonna get now this is going to be interesting let's just see boot 
booting to XP. Interesting. Okay, here's the solution on booting. Boot up your uh, NUC, press F10, give it a couple of presses, and you found that you've got the UFI bootloader here and another boot drive here. So I'm going to select the boot drive and there it is, XPMC is booting. Boots pretty quickly. And when it's in focus, it looks even better. There we go. Right, I'm just going to set up some um, directory systems, some folders that are monitored, have a look at the programs, see if I can set some stuff up through that, and I'll uh, come back to you. But basically, that is how you install XBMC uh, with XBMC Ubuntu. So, general testing seems to be successful. YouTube app worked, and um, SMB file shares, UPnP file shares worked. There's one file I just want to test here. This is important, I think, for, for many people. Looking at the N2820 version, this is a 30 megabit per second, 1080B, 1080p, 50 frames a second, H.264 file, um, 200 megs. This is coming over LAN, um, served from a NAS on the local LAN. So uh, we'll just play this one. <laughs> And uh, you won't. Let me just turn that volume down. Need one minute of This is a test video I use for um, CPU testing on Ultrabooks. Uh, it's coming across perfect here. I'm not sure how much CPU is being used. Be interested to know how much CPU is being used. Although, is it? The most important thing is that it's playing absolutely perfectly. Actually having a look at the NUC and trying to feel to see if there's any heat or anything coming out of the NUC while it's playing that. A high CPU on that would would, uh, would show itself with, with heat and fan noise on that. But it's absolutely as silent as it is in ambient situations, which is, is, is extremely silent. Uh, extremely silent, extremely quiet, I mean. So, uh, just to, to show you that uh, YouTube is working on this, go to video add-ons, YouTube, uh, explore YouTube, um, there's a search, let's just do a search, for, whoops, oh, come back please. Um, Search, search. I'm just going to do a ten. There should be a few 1080p videos that come up when I do this. And are there? Hmm, Planet Earth. That's one I use a lot. And that's going to be playing at 1080p. Well, and there's really no problem there. Looks great. The source video is apparently 1080p. I'm not sure how compressed that is. It doesn't look perfect to, to my eyes, but that's a, a matter of compression within within the YouTube system, not uh, not anything else. Nothing to do with XBMC. So 1080p playing from YouTube. 1080p playing 30 megabits per second from local network I really think that if you're only interested in H.264 on YouTube that that really kind of sums up and probably makes you happy satisfied that the the NUC is going to work N2820 processor this is a Baytrail M the system costs $120. Throw a RAM and SSD. In fact, you can run this off. Uh, um, you can run this off a USB stick. So you may not even require um, a hard disk in this. I'm running an SSD anyway. Um, right. So loads more stuff on umpcportal.com about the Intel NUC. Please take a look. There's a Windows 8.1 performance review. I'll write this video up as well. 
XBMC is extremely important for this. We're going to do some tests with the uh, infrared on this and of course to see if there are um, any limitations in terms of kind of noise. Try and get a feeling for power usage. Not so important for many people I think but uh, you know because this is a, a very low power you're talking about under 20 watts of power in full use on idle oh, I think in idle the most power is consumed by the actual PSU and not by the unit itself so we're talking about under 10 watts maybe 5 watts the actual the CPU itself is it will be idle at under 1 watt but the whole system including PSU probably uh, 5 to 10 watts it's pretty much nothing really right thanks for watching my name's chippy at chippy on you uh, on twitter and this is the steve chippy youtube channel please subscribe and uh, like pass it on i want to do more testing with these nuts with these uh, mini pcs i think they're pretty interesting sort of portable uh, mobile mini computers i'm very interested in looking at fanless versions of these as well so low power fanless is where it's going to be on umc portal thanks for watching we'll see you on the next video